Well, welcome back to this special WMUR presentation, James Foley, Life and Legacy. We are live in our Manchester studio and in Alexandria, Virginia tonight, where tomorrow we will learn the fate of the first terrorist sentenced in Foley's death. Gene? James Foley's family and the families of three other Americans held with him and killed came to this courthouse here in Alexandria, Virginia for justice. They testified against one man convicted earlier this month. The other pled guilty and will be sentenced tomorrow. They do not face the death penalty. And we asked Diane Foley why she supports that decision. It's harder to spend time in prison than to quickly just be killed. I think it's a more just punishment, really, and it gives them a chance for redemption. So all around, I just think it's, I was very much against the death penalty. Diane Foley wants the two men convicted of taking her son's life to live out their lives in prison. She believes the third man involved, Mohammed Mwazi, nicknamed Jihadi John, didn't face full justice when he was blown up in a drone strike in 2015. When Mwazi was killed, he didn't even know what was happening. And so this way they have a chance to think about what they did and really they have a chance to repent and heal themselves. Diane says after meeting Alexander Cote face to face, she understands the gravity of the punishment he will endure. Through his own losses, I mean, he'll never see his family as three little girls, you know, throwed me the picture of his little girls. You know, he, so he's losing too. I mean, this is, so to me, this is, much more accountability than the death penalty. He felt so strongly about the need to share with the rest of the world what was happening in Syria, um, what was happening to innocent people there, how people were being tortured by the Assad regime. Thank heavens for people like James Foley, for those people who are reporting on the war in Ukraine, because without that, we wouldn't know what's going on, and we wouldn't be able to respond in the way that we need to. So the images and the information gathered by witnesses in war zones provide a lens into faraway situations that still affect us here at home. And that was James Foley's work. To understand his drive in dangerous situations, we turn to a face that many of you will be familiar with. James Foley was giving a voice to the voiceless. That's exactly what he was doing. ABC News Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raditz. So this goes pretty far back. Has reported from conflict zones around the world for decades. If you don't go, if you don't take that risk, then those voices will never be heard. It's what James Foley was trying to do again and again and again, and did it so well. He knew the importance of, of seeing it with your own eyes. So you've been at war 30 years. Yep. Is there a risk? You bet there is, and no one paid a greater price than, than James Foley and those others who have been killed in war zones. We're, we're seeing that right now in Ukraine as well. This border crossing into Poland handles about 3,000 cars a day. How do you balance the priority of your own safety versus telling the story. It's just not my own safety. I try very hard to always think of my crew. These are all over. And my family understands this. You take risks, but what you're doing means something. It matters. What James did was vitally important. What war correspondents do is vitally important. He took great risk, but he knew, he knew how important those stories were to tell. Foley wasn't just working in conflict zones. He became the story when he was taken hostage. Another American citizen taken prisoner in a different country under different circumstances lived to tell his story and to fight for others held captive tweeting in English, so I was targeted. A bullet nearly missed my head and another struck my left arm. Mohammed Sultan traveled to Egypt in 2013 during a time of unrest when the military was removing the country's president, part of a peaceful protest against what was happening. Sultan was caught up in the middle of it, shot, and days later arrested for speaking out. I was sentenced to life in prison uh, for spreading false information. I was brutally tortured uh, for 22 months 
uh, while in prison, both physically and psychologically, uh, living in underground dungeons and inhumane conditions. I had to have surgery on the arm that I was shot in by an inmate doctor with no anesthesia. During nearly two years in prison, he went on a 489-day hunger strike. I was on the cusp of death uh, multiple times. Senator McCain may, you know, he rests in peace, who was a, a POW, um, President Obama, that worked together in a bipartisan way to make sure that I was released from prison. There's no sweeter taste than the taste of freedom. But Mohammed's father remains in an Egyptian prison, held for more than seven years now. Where he was beaten, where he was tortured, um, and told that this was because of my human rights advocacy. Mohammed Sultan founded the Freedom Initiative, a human rights organization dedicated to the release of political prisoners in the Middle East. We have been working alongside the James Foley Foundation, Diane uh, Foley, and what she, the beautiful and amazing thing that she's created out of a tragedy to make sure that it doesn't happen to other people. And working in a bipartisan way to make sure that people spend one less day one less hour in prison. My heart aches for 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 uh, for uh, James Foley. My heart aches for um, the other Americans and Egyptians and Syrians and people who 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 have to endure and live through these conditions. I wish our government would move fast, strong, uh, and, uh, to free every American citizen. And Sultan mentioned the James Foley Foundation. And after the break, we will take a closer look at the foundation's work. And that includes safety training for journalists to protect them during any story they cover. The thing is, is there's physical courage, right? For some reason, I have physical courage. But really, think about it. That's nothing compared to moral courage. I can go and get those shots. But if I don't have the moral courage to challenge authority, to write about things that are going to maybe have reprisals on my career, if I don't have that moral courage, we don't have journalism. Mm -hmm. 